what is going on YouTube today I'm back out here Southview Cemetery in Atlanta and this one here is a unique one for me um, I knew a little bit or heard the name before but not really knew anything about him um, but one re I've, I've been asked before why don't I just go straight to you know the grave and and do a little story there but me personally I like walking through the cemeteries because you never find you never know what you're going to find you never know who you will find or or what and that's and that happened here um, about a month or so ago when I did um, Hank Aaron and and I was walking through the cemetery and I came across um, a guy by the name of Graham Washington Jackson Sr. And I was like, why does that name sound familiar to me? So, of course, I should have did then, but I didn't. I, I went home and, and looked it up and I had to come back um, and do a little story on him. And the reason being is because um, Mr. Wash, Mr. Graham Washington Jackson Sr. Um, was a black um, musician and is mainly famous for playing for President Franklin Roosevelt. And if you remember here, right here, here's um, Mark Luther King Sr.'s um, youngest son. Remember, he died of, in a pool and stuff, um, drowned in the pool. But anyway, before we get started, let me say welcome and thank you for watching. Um, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, comment, things like that. Um, so let's get going. So, um, Mr. Jackson was born on February 22nd, 1903 in Norfolk, Virginia. Some say Portsmouth. I'm not familiar with that area, so I'm not really sure what if it's by each other or they change the name or whatever. But um, anyway, at the early age, he had the ability to play multiple musical instruments. It was said that he could play the piano before he even knew how to write. Now, this is Jackson here, but it's the wrong Jackson. Um, he learned to play the organ, piano, accordion, and um, he also became a, a um, choral director, conductor. He went to live with his aunt when his honey, and the hunting accident caused his father to lose an arm and his mother had to be committed um, to a hospital for severe, um, severe depression. And by his teenage years, he, um, like I said, he had already learned to play multiple, multiple inter instruments and also was composing his own music. Now, after he graduated from high school in 1924, he moved to Atlanta to attend Morehouse College. Not long after moving to Atlanta, he started a jazz band called the Seminole Syncopathers, Patters, or something like that. Um, that year, the, ba um, the band would record bluegrass, blues, like, um, and sailing on Lake Pope, po let me see, Pont your train it's a hard word I guess and um, he became the house pianist at the Bailey's 81 theater which was a theater set up for different acts but in playing there he was able to keep um, a steady source of income and exposed to um, an exposure to mr. Um, to the wealthy now mr. Jackson would also work at WSB radio station and there was just only a few radio stations around that was playing black artists. By the time the radio station exposed Mr. Jackson to white audiences outside Atlanta he had became um, pretty famous. It was written in the newsletter that Graham Jackson was idolized by whites in Atlanta. The white press said that there are none of, none of their race that can compare with Mr. Jackson. 
and it was at this time the black artist was increasingly performing for white audiences and white audiences started attending um, black performances now during the depression he played at parties and other functions like weddings and social events for Atlanta's white you know upper class he was becoming more and more successful among the rich white people and now like I said one of the wealthy white people that admired Mr. Jackson was then governor of New York and future president of the United States and that would be Mr. Roosevelt. And Mr. Um, Jackson would um, play for Mr. Roosevelt at the White House and also at the Little White House in Warm Springs, Georgia, which is Mr. Roosevelt's home where he could stay away from Washington. And it was there at a little while at the Little White House that Roosevelt would die. And Mr. Jackson was actually in Warren Springs preparing for a show when he heard that his good friend had passed away. And when the hearse drove slowly by, people lined up to pay their respects. And Mr. Jackson, in his military uniform, was seen playing one of Roosevelt's favorite songs called Going Home on his accordion with tears in his eyes. And here you can see Now in the 1950s, Mr. Jackson would appear on Ed Sullivan's show, The Today Show, and he would do Coca-Cola commercials. He was appointed in 1969 to the State Board of Corrections because the governor of the time, Lester Maddox, believed that an African-American's voice was needed on the board. As he became more popular, he would be known as Ambassador of Goodwill, and he was named by Governor Jimmy Carter as an official musician of the state of Georgia in 1971. Now, Mr. Jackson was also married to Helen Blayton. The two of them had two sons, Graham Jackson Jr. and a daughter from a previous relationship. Her name was Louise Jones. Now, Mr. Jackson sadly passed away of a stroke at the age of 79 on January 15, 1983. And here, it's his final resting place. Let me see. Right there. Graham Washington Sr., February 22nd, 1903, January 15th, 1983. in the U.S. Navy, served in World War II. So rest in peace, Mr. Jackson and family. And there you have it. So that's why I walk around um, the cemeteries um, when I do a story because you never know like I said you never know who you're going to run into who you see not not just that but it's kind of nice just to get out and walk around and and look at all the different monuments and things like that but anyway thanks for watching um, please like I said consider subscribing leaving a comment um, hitting that like button, and we'll see you on the next People of the Past.